um, just tips on teaching. There's actually a really cool book I found, uh, An Nabika Mu'allim, the Prophet وسلم, as a teacher, which highlights a lot of the teaching practices of the Prophet. وسلم. It's been translated into Urdu as well. I haven't seen an English translation yet. Maybe there's one out there. Uh, but from my experience, just kind of summarizing some of those things and um, in my own experience, the f three or four, four things that I think take uh, the majority credit for being a, an effective teacher, uh, the first of them would have to be to think like a student. Uh, like, you know, when you know something or you're an expert in something and you're a professor or a teacher, then a lot of times people speak at the level of professor or they speak at the level of scholar. But when you're, when you're teaching, it's not the same as speaking. When you're teaching, you have to actually uh, think about people that have no background, they have no necessarily prerequisite information. And so you have to bring them from the bottom up. They shouldn't hear you teach and say, man, that was a pretty hard lecture, or I didn't get most of what was being said. That's not their fault, that's actually a teacher's fault. So to bring a, te a teacher has to visualize themselves literally sitting in there, not knowing anything, and how would they be spoken to. So that's, that's very, very important in the role of a teacher. Um, a second thing that I would have to argue is letting go of inhibitions. One of the things that personally helped me a lot in teaching is teaching children. Uh, because when you teach kids, you have to let go of your inhibitions. If, you, if you're going to tell a story, you can't be boring because they're going to eat you alive. You have to turn into a lion where you're going to talk about a lion. Blah! You know, you have to not not be shy. And you have to be able to make a fool of yourself and completely let go. And this is actually part of, it's almost like theater, You, you uh, I argue sometimes, teaching in a classroom. Because keeping people's attention for a long period of time is not easy. You can't just talk for hours and hours and hours and expect people to just sit there and listen. You have to be able to captivate their attention. And part of doing that is to not have any hesitations when you want to demonstrate something, when you want to say something. It's okay to make a joke that's not funny and nobody left. At least you're having fun doing it. And, and it, it actually, your confidence and your comfort with yourself, it projects onto students. They can sense it. Uh, the next thing is actually to be yourself. You know, a lot of people when they don't have a mic on or they're not on the podium or teaching or speaking, they're someone and as soon as they get on the mic, they become somebody else. This is actually pretty weird. You just be yourself. Be, whether you're talking to a crowd of 30, 40, 50, 50,000, it doesn't matter. You don't, you don't have to become a different persona when you, you know, when the camera is on or when you're speaking. Uh, and that, that projects because everybody sitting in your audience uh, in teaching should feel like you're talking to them one on one. Um, and that really, really goes a long way. And then, of course, the final, especially not in speaking, but more so in teaching, is to, to find the right balance between being an authority in the classroom and being a friend in the classroom. If you're too much of an authority, there's a, an emotional disconnect between yourself and your students, and that, you know, becomes a barrier to learning. And if you're too much, too chummy and too, too much of a friend in the classroom, then you're not gonna get any work done because they're just gonna turn the entire class into a hangout. So finding that right balance between humor and you know taking it easy, giving breaks, and then also putting your foot down when necessary, all of that is actually pretty, pretty important in a, in a teaching environment.